Hi there, welcome back for another lesson. So in this lesson I will talk about the concept of concentration. I'll just give you an overview. We're not going to solve any math problems. I'll give you essentially the definition and uh, what we use this concept for. So first we need to talk about solutions. So what is a solution? It's a homogeneous mixture, a mixture in which we cannot determine what is uh, the solute, what is the solvent. In other words, what we dissolved into a liquid. We can't see what is what. So when water is used as a solvent, and most of the time we do use water because it dissolves most things, we call this an aqueous solution, right, for aqua, water. Um, so a solution is a mixture whereby the different components do not bond chemically. We could separate the components without having to go through a chemical reaction, but by using physical means. Now, how does that relate to concentration? Well, as I said before, we dissolve something into something, right? So the part that we dissolve is called a solute, and the end result is called a solution. The solution is a combination of what we dissolved, the solute, and the substance in which we dissolved it, which we call the solvent. So when we use water, for example, we use water as a solvent in that mixture. Now, this ratio can be very useful in various situations. As an example, if we want to know if water is fit to be consumed, so the water that's coming out of the tap, for example, um, does it have the right amount of chlorine to kill bacteria uh, and microorganisms, but without harming us? So does it have the right amount? We need to calculate the amount of chlorine per amount of water. Uh, we might need to know if the soil in which we want to grow fruits and vegetables, if it's uh, nutrient rich. So are there enough nutrients for the plant? So we might collect a sample of soil and we want to look at how many uh, or what proportion of those nutrients uh, are present in the soil. Uh, it could be if you go for a blood test, they will look for your white blood cells, your platelets, your red blood cells. So that would be part of the solute within the blood sample, which is the solution. So there are many other examples I could give you. We use the concept of concentration practically every day without even realizing it sometimes. Uh, another example would be when we cook. Let's say you baked bread. Well, it's important to know how much yeast, the solute, to put in the whole mixture to make sure that your bread comes out uh, nice and fluffy. If you forget the yeast, it's not going to work. If you put too much, uh, either the bread's going to be too big, well, it wouldn't be, but um, it's, it's basically useless. You're wasting. So there, there is a right, a correct ratio uh, in terms of ingredients to use in many recipes. So that's another example as to where we use the concept of concentration without really thinking about it. Now, if something is very concentrated, it means there's a lot of solute and very little solvent. So let's say you made hot chocolate using powder. If you put a lot of powder and just a little bit of milk, it's going to make a paste. You can't really drink that. It's too concentrated. But on the other hand, if you put a lot of milk and just a tiny amount of chocolate powder, it won't taste anything. It'll taste like milk, but it won't taste like chocolate milk. So that would be to dilute. So high concentration, concentrated, low concentration, we call this diluted. Now, how do we calculate this concentration? There are many different um, formulas that we'll use. Uh, you see a few here. I will not use them in this video. We are going to go over them in subsequent videos. Um, but essentially, it could be using ppm, parts per million, so very tiny amount of, um, of solute in a big, big, big sample. Uh, it could be using percentages, so percent ratios. It could be using moles, so n is for moles, or simply the mass of a solute. Now, I will point out here that it is very important when you read a problem that you list your information and that will help you determine which one of these equations you're going to need to use because as you can tell, there are many of them and you're going to get confused um, as to which one you're supposed to be using. So always list your information and list your units. By listing your units, you can always make the connection with the proper equation that you're supposed to be using to solve the problem. Okay, but I will repeat all that in 
the other videos when we actually tackle the math. So if you have questions, uh, put them in, in the section below, in the comment section. And otherwise, I will see you in the next video where we're going to start solving problems using these equations. Until then, take care.